Statistics and Excel. Confidence intervals when standard deviation of population is not known. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there are three tabs down below. Example, practice. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one, because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Blank example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We will construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our, practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. We're looking at confidence intervals using T distributions as opposed to normal distributions in part because we don't know what the standard deviation of the population is. Our general scenario being similar to recent practice problems with a few adjustments. That being, we want to find information about a larger population. We can't test every item within that population. Therefore, the strategy Take a sample of the population, test the sample, hoping that we can apply the findings from the sample to the larger population in general. The two types of strategies we typically think of are hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. To do this, hypothesis testing usually lending itself to situations where possibly we think we know what the middle point should be. For example, what are the average amount of nuts in the bags of nuts? We think we know what that is possibly, then we want to test it. So we have our hypothesis, we take our sample, and we try to determine if the results of the sample are further enough away from that middle point for us to reject the original hypothesis. Therefore, we kind of think of this bell curve as basically the, the hypothesis, in essence, to see if the sample is on the tail ends of it. With the confidence intervals, that often lends itself to situations where we don't know what the middle point is. That is what we're trying to find. So we're going to basically take the average of the sample, and you can imagine that as, in essence, the middle point. Now, to create the range around it, you can still kind of imagine hypothesis testing in that if this was the middle point that I found, I can imagine each point around it. So I can imagine what if this was the mean that would be my hypothesis and is what i actually found over here further enough away for us to reject the original hypothesis and i can do that for every point in which case the range would be peak to peak right but that's a little bit more difficult to visualize what we would like to be able to do is say okay i want to make basically this bell curve which now we're going to be using t distribution so that that is going to be basically the middle point and then I can create my range using the functions, in essence, with uh, the T distribution to give us our uh, confidence level. So that's the strategy that we will be using. Now, to do that in a prior presentation, we used the bell-shaped distribution to do that because we knew the standard deviation of the population. 
Now, oftentimes, if you're using confidence intervals, you might not know the standard deviation of the population. Uh, and, and so then you might not be able to new, use a normal distribution, but rather might need to use t-distributions. Now, the t-distributions, we won't get into a whole lot of detail on how, we, how they came up with those, but the general idea of them is that they're still going to be this bell-shaped type of curve, but they're going to lend themselves to situations where we don't know the standard deviation. And in particular, usually they're thought of as situations where you're taking a relatively small uh, sample size and the population of the actual data you expect to be tending towards a bell-shaped curve. So something like the nuts example is usually going to be data that tends towards uh, like a bell-shaped curve. Now, as the sample size gets larger, you might still be able to use, you know, the T distributions in situations where we don't know what the standard deviation is, but we saw that the T distributions will then tend towards getting closer to like a normal bell-shaped curve when our sample size uh, gets larger. So when we think about these T distributions, they're going to be the similar curve, but they have wider, fatter tails on them, and the curve will actually be different depending on on the state of the problem and uh, depending on the uh, degrees of freedom, uh, which we'll take which we'll take a look at. So you you kind of want to just keep that in mind. We're using similar functions, but with a t distribution which has fatter tails, which is actually multiple different curves that Excel knows because of the the information we're going to be putting into the formula for the degrees of freedom, uh, but. From there, we can apply it in a similar fashion as with the normal distributions. All right, so let's go to the practice tab. This We have some pre-formatted cells, so you can work it through here if you want to with less Excel formatting. We're going to the blank tab. We're going to do the Excel formatting and everything. So let's go ahead and select the entire thing like we normally do with the triangle. Right-click. We're going to format this thing. Currency, Negative numbers bracketed, no dollar signs. Let's get rid of the decimals to start out with. Closing that up, go into the home tab, font group. We're going to border or bold it. You probably don't need to bold it, maybe, unless you like having it bold, but I think it's easier to see on a screencast. All right, so I'm just going to put the header up top. We're looking at confidence. If I misspell it, I apologize. Intervals. T distribution where the STD standard deviation of the population is not known is not known is what we're thinking. All right, so let's let's make this a little bit larger. I'm going to make it a header format. Go into the home tab, font group. Let's make it black and white, not red. Black and white. Red is too aggressive looking it's like looking scared it looks like halloween or something we'll use red shortly though and then we're going to say what is average output uh is going to be basically our question so we're thinking that's what we're basically trying to find we're measuring uh output and we're trying to say what's the average in our data so it's kind of our generic problem and we might think of like the number of widgets that we create or something like that as the average output. Now, what is the average output then? We're looking for the pop mean. That's the question then. So how many, what's the average amount of widgets that were that are the output? So that's what we're looking for. And so then we're gonna say, all right, then uh, the, the stand, we have the, our equations for the standard error, which I'm just gonna copy over. So I'm gonna kind of cheat here and copy the formula over here and paste that boom and so if you want to actually draw that formula you can go to the insert symbols equation and ink it in i think that's the easiest way to do that where you can just say ink x bar plus minus and then when it messes up like it didn't write it correctly i could circle that it's like how could you not interpret this correctly it's beautifully written and it's so badly written but it can't even find the right one but you can usually change it if you're writing it slightly better than mine. That's how we made those formulas. So if you want to do that, you can make your formulas thusly. All right. So let's, I'm going to make this black and white too, just so I could see my headers kind of extending out to here. I'm going to make this uh, orange. Uh, uh, and so I'm going to say, let's make this to orange, bright orange, because that's my like data 
that we're starting with starting data let's make this black and white maybe as a header for my formula and then we have the general idea of the t distribution is that it's used usually used you used if data is normal shape meaning the data itself has a normal distribution or n is large so then if n is large and you don't know the standard deviation then you might still be able to use uh, uh, the t distributions because remember that if the if n was was small uh, we have a problem with the with the the data if it wasn't normal shaped because it it might not be large enough to tend towards a bell-shaped curve according to the central limit theorem but if n is larger then you would think it would tend it would be more likely to tend towards that and the t distributions are using that a normal kind of shape to it all right so we're going to say let's it's not exactly a normal shape but it has that it has that bell shaped that has the wider tails all right <laughs> so let's let's put some brackets around this okay then let's make a skinny c i'm going to make a skinny c and then we'll actually create our data uh that we're going to be that we're going to be pulling from so i'm going to say that the mean for the data that we create is going to be 2500 the std of the population and this is the input data is going to be 304 we will say i'm going to make this red because this is something that we know but that we're imagining isn't known in universe right we're building we're, we as the viewer know we're watching the movie and we're creating it but we're like the writer but like our characters don't know this stuff this is the behind the scenes stuff that we get privy to because we're special all right so then we're going to pick that up and then let's create our data let's make a skinny f by taking the skinny c home tab format painter and put that down on the f and then we'll create our data set based on that information i'm going to make this header format a uh, home font group let's make this black and white and center all right so then i'm going to go to the data tab we're going to go to the analysis and data analysis if you don't have this on you might have to turn it on you can look up on your favorite browser how to do that we've checked it out in the past or maybe chat gtp can check can help you to open that one up but we're using the normal uh what am i what am i thinking random number generation random number generation and then we want number of variables we're going to put one there that's like the columns number of random numbers let's say we want 500 that's going to be representing our population 500 will give us enough to work with we want a normal distribution and then here's our mean which we just said was 2500 that's the average output and we want the standard deviation the spread 304 we want to put it in our worksheet and here's where we put it in the here we're going to put it right there boom so i'm going to put it right there and then okay so 500 should be able to pick that up pretty quickly excel when you get to like thousands it kind of might take a little time so it re if reformatted it met wonky like so i'm going to right click and say hey you messed up my formatting so let's format it again and we want to go to currency negative numbers bracketed no dollar sign do we need the decimals i don't think we do there are decimals there but we're okay with that and then we'll say okay home tab i'm going to make it bold make it bold and then I'll double click to shorten it up. I'll say control shift down. Oh, wait a second. I went, I hit the right arrow. Let's do that again. Control shift down. And I'll make it blue and bordered as is our typical custom. Actually make it red. I'm gonna make it red because once again, this is stuff that isn't known in universe. We as the writer, we know about it behind the scenes. Okay. So now let's let's think about the actual so this is the numbers we used to generate the population data let's see what the actual output is of our population which will be slightly different than these numbers so i'm going to hit this the format painter format paint the h we're going to say the data for the pop data which again is not known in universe this is what we know behind the scenes home tab font group we're like building it like like tokian building middle earth or something you know because we we're 
we're creating our own language behind and then it's going to all everything's going to work together okay so then we're going to say this is going to be equal to the count so how many did we have control shift down 500 should be 500 and then the mean is going to be around 2500 but not exactly that you would think mean is the average so the average control shift down enter okay it's exactly 2500 probably not exactly if i added some decimals yeah it's a little off but close enough and then we've got the std of the population how many stds are out there in the population <laughs> so this is going to be equal std of the pop all right we're going to say control shift down control backspace so there is that one and once again it's a little bit different than this one of course and there it is so we'll make that red and bordered red as well because we know about that or right, that's right you know i like to make it red and white because it's easier to see all right now we're going to take a sample and we're going to take a fairly small sample from this population and that's what we're going to work with we're going to imagine that we don't have a, a very large sample but the population data itself we imagine would be bell shaped in other words if i select Control shift down and this was the average or average output then you would expect it to be around whatever around a central point uh and then have our error you know around it right so so you would expect this to be a bell shape uh towards a bell shaped distribution so even with a small sample we should be okay then using our t distribution so let's go to the insert and just check that out by entering a histogram uh, there we go histogram so it looks so there's our histogram of the data which again isn't known in universe but the universe knows that this is like the type of data that you would think would tend towards a bell shape because because of just the nature of the data all right enough explaining of that where where can i put this so it's not in the way i'll put it down here okay hopefully that won't get in the way all right so then let's make it i could put it down some lower you're gonna be in the way dude oh god it's like that looks like the little dog that's underfoot all the time anyways let's select this one and go to the home tab font group and then we're going to put it here and then we're going to say this is going to be the sample sample and we'll take our sample we're going to say this is going to be black white centered and so there's a couple ways we can draw random samples now this is random data so you could probably take like the first however many that you want to take and that would be somewhat random <laughs> because they were but or we can put a, a, a line next to it and shuffle it randomly but we also have this indexing thing so that's what i'll use it's probably the easiest thing to do this way so i'm going to say this equals the index tab of this array control shift down control backspace and then comma and then we want it to embed between wait rand between random between not rand array i keep doing that random between so the bottom and top number now represent not like whole numbers but rather bottom and top of the rows so the bottom row is this row not this row this row is number one because it's looking at this table so it's going from one comma to how many are there 500 so the last one's 500. so randomly pick stuff in that index between row one and 500. enter there we go so how many do, of these do we want let me count these one two three four five six seven eight nine ten well, let's do ten of them so i'm going to say let's double click on it i have to i have to absolute this one so it doesn't mess up uh it doesn't move down when i copy it down enter and let's copy it down 10 times so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten is that right one two three four five six seven eight nine one more ten all right we have ten samples so pretty small sample this one is known in universe so so now we're this is what they know like in the actual movie script the characters so we're going to go to the home tab font group we'll make this bordered and blue if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors 
standard color wheel. There it is. You can use a different color if you like, but I use the blue. Double click, I'll make it a little thinner. Let's make a skinny M by taking the skinny K over here, home tab, font group, format panner, and M is like, what kind of diet you're on? And K tells them the diet, and then M's like, wow, that diet works, man. Look at that. Thanks for telling me. I've, and then <laughs> you could make a fortune with that diet. Anyway, X bar uh, is gonna be the sample mean. So now we're looking at the sample mean. Remember when we're talking about the, the mean, we have, we thinking, we've thought about like the mean of the actual data, which we don't know. We know it, we know it ourselves, but we don't know it in universe. And then there's like the mean of the sample, which should tend towards the population mean, hopefully. And then we have the imagine of the mean of all sample sizes of, in this case, 10, that we can get out of the 2,500. All of those hopefully are gonna tend towards the approximate mean of the population, right? So we're gonna call it X bar here. So I'm gonna take equals the average, which is the mean of just these 10 numbers, control shift down and enter. So there we have that. And then we're gonna say S is equal to the standard DVA STDs of the sample. So, so, uh, so we're gonna say, and so now notice we don't know the standard deviation of the population. So I can take the standard deviation of the sample, STD of the sample, which is just these 10 numbers. Now remember with the standard deviation, we have the few things that we have been considering. That's the one that's a little weird because we have the standard deviation we can imagine of the population, which we don't possibly know. And then we are, and sometimes it's not even a, a bell-shaped curve, so it still measures spread. But sometimes the, the in this case it is tending towards bell shape, but not. And then we have the standard deviation of the sample, but then we also imagine oftentimes the standard deviation as if we had every possible sample of in this case sample size ten of the population of five hundred had the mean of all those and the standard deviation of that, right? And so, and, and so we've been thinking about those different ideas with regards to the standard deviation. So this is just a standard deviation. So we're gonna say this is gonna be N equals the count of the sample. So how many did we have? We had 10, let's count them again though. The count of the sample tab of these, control shift down, 10 of them. All right, and then we have uh, the number of samples, number of samples. In this case, we just have one. And so, and that's gonna help us to calculate the degrees of freedom, which is necessary for us to determine the type of T distribution that will be used. Freedom, degrees of freedom. I want total freedom, 100 degrees of, okay. This is gonna be 10 minus one. So it's always gonna be in the sample count minus, I mean, sorry, yeah, the, the number within the sample minus the number of samples. And so then we have the standard error calculation. So the standard error calculation is kind of like the other standard deviation, right? So we have the standard deviation of the population, not known. Standard deviation of the sample, we can get that and that might tend towards the standard deviation of the, of the, of the population, but what we want oftentimes is the standard deviation of all possible samples of whatever sample size, in this case, 10, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna use our uh, formula, which is gonna be something like this. Now this is the standard error, but this side is usually what we've been working with. And usually this was, was uh, sigma, which we, which we would use for the standard deviation of the population, but we don't know that what we do know is the approximation of the standard deviation of the population, which we're representing uh, with S here that we calculated up top divided by the square root of uh, the sample size N. So I can say, all right, that's gonna be equal to then the standard deviation of uh, the sample, because we know that and we don't know the population divided by the square root SQU square or SQRT the square root of n number of samples and close it up for me if you would uh, excel and then we'll add some uh, decimals 
we'll decimalize it. Okay, so then we have the confidence, confidence level. We're gonna go with the standard 95% confidence level, 0.95. I'll percentify that to recognize. So that means, you know, we want the, the bit under the curve that's gonna be in uh, the middle bit under the curve, 95% confidence. And that means that with a T distribution, by the way, that it might not be around two standard deviations to get that because the tails of the T distribution might be wider and therefore requiring a larger confidence interval to encompass them. So A is going to be equal to alpha, which is going to be equal to 1 minus 95, which of course is the 5%. And then we've got A, uh, A over 2, alpha divided by 2, which is going to be representing the amount under the outer bits here and one half of the outer bits or one of the outer bits because they're symmetrical, 5 divided by 2. Let's percentify that add some decimals to do it. Okay, so there is that. So then we can calculate the T. Now this is similar to like a Z score. So if I went over here, you'll recall that if this was a normal curve, we can measure it in X's and we can measure it in like Z scores, which are in standard deviations where the middle point is zero. But this time we're calling them T's, right? So now we're going to say, so now we're looking at uh, the T distribution for each side, right? So I'm going to say, all right, so we can calculate the T and we do that with this function. This equals the T dot inverse tab. And then we want the upper. So it's going to be, well, let's start with this. We're going to say uh, it's going to be, we're going to pay, it wants the alpha. So the probability here is going to be this one. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this one. And then, so, so it's the half of it, right? So 95 under the graph, the tails are 5%. The alpha is half of that at one side of it, 0.25 and then comma. And then we want the degrees of freedom, which was nine. You'll recall that was the, uh, the N, the count minus the number of samples. We only had one and enter. So if I add some decimals, we go doot doot. And that's at the 2.26. Now, I would like it to be uh, on the upper end, a positive number. So therefore, I'm going to go into this. And because it's symmetrical, I can go to this first argument and say 1 minus, And I should get the 2.26. So once again, it was at negative 2.26. Now it's at positive uh, 2.26. So now we can calculate our margin of error. So margin. So this is the margin of error. And we're kind of looking at this formula for the for the margin of error. So now we've got the T and we have then the uh, the standard error, right? So the margin of error is going to be equal to then the the we could say it's equal to the standard error times this. And so, so that we're going to get the 228. Let's add some decimals. Now, there's also a formula that you can do. So I'm going to do the same thing with a formula, which is going to be equal to the confidence, confidence dot T. And in this one, it wants uh, alpha. So, th so that means we're going to actually pick up this one, the whole thing, and then uh, the standard deviation which is also a little tricky because you kind of think it would want the standard error, but it wants this one, the standard deviation of, in our case, the sample, because we don't know the population. So we take the standard deviation of that and then comma, and then it wants the size. So we're looking at the number of samples and enter. And let's add some decimals and we should get to the same number of the 191. All right, so now let's go to, the, to our lower x bar x bar then in our upper x bar this is going to be our range so this is going to be the amount that we're going to be adding to each side so now we we're going to say here's our middle point and now we know each side in terms of standard deviations or t's in our case instead of z's and in the x's in terms of the the distance so now i can take the middle point which is going to be the mean that we got to up top. 
And then we're going to take that and the lower bit will be minus the margin of error. And then I can take equal to the middle point, which is going to be this one, and then plus the margin of error, either of these two, and that would be the range. So now we can see the range here. So we have the middle point and then the range uh, that we're looking to, and then the tails would be outside of it in X's, as well as basically in standard deviation, which would be Z's, but now in this case, because it's a T distribution, in T's. So now we can say, okay, does the actual population mean lie within there? The actual population is 2,500. So that's in there. Remember that like 5% of the time, it might, it'll fall outside just by random chance because we had a 95% confidence level. All right, so let's select all of this. And then I'm gonna go to border blue. Now I'm also gonna try to do a similar thing. We're gonna put our cursor over here in skinny take that skinny and put it over here. And this time with a data analysis tool. Now the data analysis tool will give us information. So we'll go to data, you have to turn it on to have the analysis, which you can look up in your favorite browser uh, if you don't have that on, but then we can turn on our data analysis. So now we're looking for data analysis. So we want the descriptive statistics. We're gonna say, okay. And then the, the uh, input, so the one that we want for the input, it's going to be this information. I'll select it. I'm including the title because you can then click down here for does label uh, in first row. I'm going to say, yeah, there's a title in it. So just make sure you click that off if you're adding the title and don't click it off if you're not adding the title. We want to put it in our worksheet. So I'm going to select here and then say where I want it. We want it right in this cell. And then um, what I want from it is summary statistics and the confidence level. We set it at 95, that's the default, but you could change it for more confidence up to like 99 confidence or something like that, 98, so on, so on. So, okay. So then it generates our data. So that's nice and, nice and easy that it gives us that information, uh, but it's not dynamic, meaning if our data changes over here, which it is, it's jumping around, right? it's not changing this information. So this information is uh, static. Uh, so there is that. So that's another tool that you can use. And we can say, and it, again, it's changing here because we, we just changed it. I kept on clicking on this and it doesn't change over here because it's static. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's go over here and say, insert, uh, insert, wait, not insert. Let's go to format and make another skinny S. All right, so now let's try to graph this thing, which is a little wonky because it's T distributions want to graph around like the middle point in essence, uh, rather than the normal bell-shaped curve. So if you're trying to visualize this, you could approximate this with a bell-shaped curve and then just use that for your visualization tools or whatever. But if, or you can try to make it the T distribution, which again is similarly shaped, but a little bit wider, right? So let's, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the T, which is similar to the Z's, right? For they're measuring in standard deviations and then calculate the P of X and then the X. So let's start with that. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to go to the home tab font group. Let's make this black, white, and center it. And I'm just going to say there's four, usually four standard deviations, which are now measured in T's. So I'm going to go from negative four to uh, negative 3.99 and so on. I'm going to select those, add some decimals. I'm going to bring this down till it gets to positive four, which should be my range of the graph. Now this is going to take forever. I should have probably used a sequence formula, but it's okay. We'll just drag it down to positive numero cuatro. And so there, there, right there, right there. Don't go further than that. That's it. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back up. All right, so then we're gonna calculate our P of X. So now that this is our T, so if I look over here, we're measuring in T's, which are similar to Z's, and now I'm gonna use that to then calculate uh, the X. So now I'm gonna say, okay, four, four standard deviations or T's away, we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the T dot dist, tab and it wants x which is going to which is going to be this and then i'm going to say uh degrees of freedom 
Degrees of freedom are over here, which was nine. And then F4 on the keyboard, making it absolute so I can copy it down. Do we want it to be cumulative? I'm gonna say no, therefore zero. Closing it up, going back on it. Percentify to recognize, add some decimals. And then I'm gonna double click to copy it down. So boom, control shift down. And, and it, so it looks like it picked everything up. So that's good. And then I'm gonna go back up and say, okay. So now we want to, to calculate the X. So the X is going to be the uh, middle point, which is the uh, 231. That's the middle point. And then we're gonna say uh, plus the, the uh, standard, the degree, the standard error plus the standard error times how many of those do we have? Four. Okay, and then I'm gonna say these are outside. So everything that's outside in this O, I'm gonna make absolute F4 in the keyboard, F4 in the keyboard, so I can copy it down and enter. All right. Okay, so let's copy it down, copy it down. All right, and so then uh, let's just double check. I'll say control shift down. Did it go all the way down? Yeah, that looks right. And so, so then, and by the way, the max, the max, just to check this out, we had then over here, the lower is at two, three, three, zero. So around uh, two, three, three, zero, two, three, three, zero is two point uh, two six T's. Uh, which makes, does that make sense? 2.2, yeah. So that's a round, right? So that makes, looks correct. Okay. So then I could make then a graph of this, control shift down, control backspace, insert. We can do our normal graphs. We can do the easy graph, like doing it like this, or I can add a line graph, but we'll do the full thing, making it fancy. And we'll say we want a area graph. Oh, is that an area graph? I think it is. It's just, it's got to let, let me do it one more time. I, I just want to make sure I'm doing it properly. So this is going to be an area graph like that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have it right that way. So then we have that. And then let's get rid of the title so we can just focus on the beautiful curves. All right. I'm not here to read titles, man. I'm here to see some curves. All right, so then I'm gonna make this thinner, double clicking, making that a little bit thinner. And then I'm gonna make the X. So I'm gonna go to the chart and we're gonna go to the data and let's go to this side and make those, the, let's make the T's. Now control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up yet. So I'm gonna select this and then click there and it usually pops into place. Okay, so now we've measured it down here in terms of t's which are similar to z's uh if it was a z if it was a normal distribution and now i'd also like to add uh the x's down there which i need to add another series of data in order to apply another x2 and i'm going to create that by saying i want this to be and i'm going to make this with a fancy formula and so i'm going to say i want the this to be a t this data i want it to be a t that is between uh, negative 2.26 and positive 2.26, right? So I'm going to say this, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to equal. And then I'm going to say uh, equal to, let's say this number. Do, 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 I'm going to say negative, negative of this number. And then and then I'm going to say this is, I'm going to need quotes less than T is less than, and then I'm going to end the quotes. And then I'm going to put this number to, 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 on the positive. And I can't do it because it needs an and there. So I'm going to say and, and then this number, boom. All right, now I'm also going to need an and to tie in the, this to the text field. So I'm going to say and 
here, and then boom. Now it's too long because it picked up all the decimals, so I'm going to round it. I'm going to go into both of these and say this is going to be round tab and comma. How many decimals? Let's take it two decimals out. And then I'm going to round this one, round tab to the end of it, comma, two decimals out, close it up, enter. There we go. Something like that. All right. And then let's actually do that with a logic test here. So it's going to be an if test. Let's put this black, white, center. And this equals if tab embedding an and because there's two tests and tab. This number needs to be uh, less than it needs to be less than I'm going to go over here. It needs to be less than uh, uh, this number. And so I'm going to say there it is it needs to be less than that number and and so uh, comma for the next condition, this number needs to be greater than greater than negative of this number. All right, so there it is. I think that will do it. And then closing that up, there's my two conditions back to the if part of the formula comma, what do you want us to do if that is true? We want you to then give me this number if it's true. And then comma, what do you want us to do if it's false? Leave it blank quote space quote to give us just a space in there and everything that's outside of my data that's over here I got to make absolute so that's going to be all the O's so F4 dollar sign before the letter and number F4 dollar sign before the letter and number enter I can't see it but I'm hoping it's good I'm going to percentify to recognize add some decimals double click it down to hope it does what it's supposed to do so there it is it started showing up I think it's doing it properly let's go back up let's add it to our graph then add it to our graph chart and we're going to say data and then we're going to say add another data here's the name and then here's the data starts right here control shift down control backspace it's not showing up yet selecting this and again there it is populating okay okay back up and so there it is in the middle now I'm going to double click that middle bit. I'm going to say secondary axis. So I, it puts this thing over here. I don't need that. Get out of here. I'm going to delete that. And then now that I have a secondary axis, I can add these as my secondary axis. So I'm going to go back to my data, second data set, which now has just these numbers. I'm going to go into it and say, no, I don't want those. I want this as my secondary axis. Control shift down, control backspace and then clicking on and off so it shows up okay okay it's not there yet still but if i go to the plus button and go to the axis say show me the secondary horizontal that's great but now you put it at the top and i want it at the bottom so i'm going to say go to more options make sure i pick the right one i want this one to be at the bottom go to the bottom that's where it should be. Why do you even default to the top like that? No one likes it. That no one likes it at the top. For crying out loud, you should do it right the first time, Excel. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to tell you this. Okay, you should know what you're doing better than that. Let's make a cheater line, and then let's go. All right. So now we have our. We can see the limits here on our T distribution. So we have our middle point in, in both T's and X's, which is around 2660, boom. And then we've got 2.26 standard deviations away around here, 2.26 or something. And then that correlates to a high and the low. It keeps on shuffling, but at 2465 and 2855. So 2465 and 2855. So you have your fancy graph. Let's make let's format this bad dog. Control shift down. And then we're going to say home tab font group and we'll make it blue and bordered so it's no longer a bad dog, but now it's a good dog. It's been formatted properly. It's like potty training the dogs. We formatted that bad dog and now it's now it's a good dog. Okay.